you will need Bunsen burner. On the bottom is the needle valve, which controls the gas, and the top, which is called the barrel, which controls the airflow, which is the intensity. You will also need a rubber hose and a striker to light the Bunsen burner. Start by checking to make sure flint is in your striker. You should see sparks when raking it. Connect one end of the rubber hose to the gas nozzle, and the other end to the Bunsen burner. Make sure there's a tight fitting on these seals. Next, turn on the gas on the outside of the fume hood. You're now ready to light the Bunsen burner with the striker. Control the height of the flame with the needle valve on the bottom and the barrel controls the airflow. Rotate this until you get a double cone flame, as shown here. Once finished with the Bunsen burner, turn off the gas and allow the line to bleed out. This will burn off excess gas trapped in the line. Disconnect one end of the rubber hose from the Bunsen burner and then the gas nozzle. For this, you will need a magnetic stir bar retriever and various hot plates, as well as a magnetic stir bar itself. There are several different types of hot plates you can encounter in the lab. Be sure to read which dial is for heat and which dial controls the stir bar. You will see on a variety of these ones that when they're turned on, there will be a light indicating that one is turned on. Usually with the heat, there will be a flashing light, and if left plugged in, that will indicate that the top is still hot. So when you place your solution on top and you turn on the heat, the stir bar will move, but when you turn on the stir bar mechanism, it will spin. And this goes with all hot plates. So again, be sure that you're turning on the right dial when using the hot plates. Turning on the stir bar will not turn on the heat. Use the magnetic stir bar retriever to retrieve the stir bar out of your solution.